With Oshkosh's announcement of an LSA a year before, the unveiling of the Skycatcher just a few months ago, and so many other recent Cessna announcements, when we saw Jack Pelton the other day, we had to ask him one question. What are they putting in the drinking water in Wichita? Well, the answer may be Jet A. Well, you know, when we really look at the, the market demand, so much of it globally is, is hampered because there isn't a product out there that can run on, on diesel or Jet A. Um, I think a classic example is if you look in South Africa today, we have people who are buying new Skyhawks and they're taking the engines out immediately and putting in an aftermarket diesel engine. And we said, why are we not offering that directly out of the factory and making that available uh, for those markets that are dependent on Jet A? The uh, Skyhawk TD, as we're calling it, it has the new Teal'c Centurion 2-liter engine, which develops 155 horsepower at 2,300 RPM. It's a turbocharged liquid-cooled engine, and the engine is co uh, controlled by FADEC. It has a single lever power control, no more mixture, and uh, no nothing else about, apart from one uh, control to control the engine. A composite three-blade constant speed propeller, and it is a fully integrated design. We have fully integrated the design. It is designed for production, it is designed for maintainability, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Uh, the recommended maximum power on the TD is eight, at 85%, uh, at 155 horsepower versus 75% of the SP version, which is the Lycoming powered. Um, this brings an increase of range of 19%, increased endurance of 22%, and a cruise speed within seven knots of the 180 horsepower uh, version. Um, 140 nautical miles range, that's 24% more, and that's at 60% of power. Um, fuel consumption is about 30% uh, less um, than the normal gasoline engine, and uh, the aircraft has improved altitude performance. Once you get above 2,000 feet density altitude, the uh, takeoff performance is better, and the climb performance is better above 3,000 feet density altitude. Uh, the airplane with its three-blade propeller has a reduced noise signature. Uh, the uh, engine turns at 2,300 RPM rather than 2,400 for the gasoline-powered version. The simplified engine operation and uh, through the FADEC, uh, it starts like an automobile. It's just a matter of pressing the button and it starts uh, pretty much under all conditions. Uh, you don't have to play around with mixture controls and, uh, and, and have to do uh, special things to get, get it started if it's really cold or really hot. You will see in the instrumentation percentage power displays and the uh, FADEC records engine data. So you can see um, what is happening with engine parameters. It is a water-cooled engine or a fluid-cooled engine, uh, which means you have increased uh, thermal protection. Uh, you don't get uh, the, uh, the uh, thermal shocks with this engine that you would with a, an air-cooled engine. It's, it uh, brings improved efficiency and reliability, sustained altitude performance. Um, it's a turbocharged engine, so you don't lose any power under 8,000 feet density altitudes. And the cabin heater works off of a radiator. It works off of the liquid cooling system rather than on exhaust. So there is uh, less chance of uh, carbon monoxide getting into the cabin. And uh, it's simplified for maintenance and troubleshooting. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. 
the jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Do you see this more of an international airplane, or do you think that North America really has the taste for a diesel Skyhawk? I think initially it'll be international. Uh, domestically, the real barrier will be, especially the small airports, do they have Jet A on the field? Because so many of your small uh, GA fields today only have Avgas, and the cost and, and EPA requirements to put another fuel farm in could be prohibitive. Now, conversely, I believe that some of the flight schools, uh, if you look at some of the larger flight institutions, whether it be an Embry-Riddle, whether it be a Pan American, they probably, there could be a significant cost advantage in their flight training programs to be able to convert over to the diesel. They can fuel the airplane at the beginning of the day. Uh, if they aren't running at full power, they can probably get through numerous students in a given day without having to refuel, which is a, is a pretty good operating advantage for a flight training environment. There may be Cessna adherents of old rolling over in their graves with the thought that the future Skyhawk pilot's going to pull up to the airport ramp and go, fill it with Jet A. A little bit of swagger when he does it. It's a new generation. Things change. But who knew that we'd be putting Jet A in Skyhawks? Well, Cessna does. A number of others have in the past. We see this is something we're going to see a lot more of in the future simply because we have problems with the availability of 100 low lead. We don't know where it's going to be coming from. We don't know about the supply. With Jet A powered aircraft, that problem now disappears. For Aero News and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.